Given an ultimatum of seven days, the Federal High Court in Lagos has ordered the federal government to fix the prices of goods and petroleum products. Justice Ambrose Louis Alagoa gave the order while delivering judgment in a suit filed by human rights activist Femi Falana against the Price Control Board and the Attorney General of the Federation. The country has recorded different forms of protests due to the inflation and wants the government to take immediate action to stabilize the economic situation. Joining us in the studio to discuss more on this development is CEO Tongo Farms Enterprises, Uluremi Bukwala. Good morning. Thank Good you for morning, joining ladies. us. Welcome, sir. Thank you. Now, there are those who would say this matter of um, price control, we see it feature in some areas, for instance, fuel, or is it because when you look at the differentials, when they talk about the landing cost and how it is retail, there are those who have argued. But how has that really resolved issues around uh, fuel, the supply of fuel and the cost of fuel and everything around it? Because there are so many arguments around governments really handling matters of price control. Uh, to some extent, First of all, good morning, ladies. Thank you. Yeah. To some extent, yeah. maybe, mm. because um, if you go to NMPC fuel stations, you will buy better in terms of cheaper, cheaper, right. cheaper price. And so it creates competition. That's what you're saying. So if we bring it down to the matters of food, if we bring it down to the matter of food, which means our government has to have a, an alternative where people can buy just like an NPC, against independent marketers, right. other people. So if you don't have alternative, and you are insisting that what, we talked about um, uh, irrigation issue yeah. this morning. To fuel the generator, to power the whatever, is expensive. Mm. Labor cost is there, weather issue. But if you don't have the alternative that which people can patronize, and you want to tell the farmer with all the insecurity, with the, all the challenges put together, labor costs put together, transportation, everything, hmm. you might probably not really achieve anything. But if you have an alternative, which you know that what you yourself can really determine the cost. So if people cannot buy from other people, they can buy from your own. Hmm. From government. From government. And that's really the key. Does government have that alternative right now? They don't. Hmm. Did we ever have? Uh, did we ever have this? Because the the, the law in question, uh, 1977, mm. uh, people have said, um, okay, there must have been a need for for the law in the first place. Uh, for them, um, the like Mr. Falano now, who is bringing up this this intervention now to say. Let us have it this way. Does government really, like um, Veronica asked, does, does government really have it under our present realities to see this through? Is this something that you see implemented? They can. They can. Okay. They can. But they don't have now. But they can. They can in the sense that what? If they can buy off from the farmers. If farmers have a ready meal market in government, fantastic. So they can, from there, now sell to the world, to the people. But instead of them to say that, well, look, you, with all the stress, with all the wala, with all the rigorous of taking the goods from your farm area to the market area, it won't help. But if they can have a, 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 a point in such a way that, um, look, you can take, because when you look at the cost of transportation, when you look at the road, when you look at everything put together. Mm, the chain. You, the chain. You find out that what, from the farm to the market area, it might be almost twice. Mm. So if government can take care of that, go to the farm location, buy off from them. Let it be your own duty to make sure that what you move it to the market area. Fantastic. Because, I mean, the element of uh, middlemen too, you can't, it's also there. <laughs>
Right. Also there. But there, there are those who have also said perhaps that the government could be looking in the areas of subsidy, subsidizing mm. and paying some monies perhaps to farmers and you know, just taking a chunk of some of the cost mm. and then um, allowing that the price will be pegged at a certain level. Mm. Does that also work? Uh, the problem is that well, they have not been successful in that kind of thing. Um, and that should have been the way out, one of the ways out. Um, you find out that what, um, you just have different kind of farmers that will come up when it comes to this money. Mm -hmm. You understand what I'm saying? Different kind of people will come up that they are farming to social location. You know what I'm saying? It just become a uh, uh, first subsidy issue too. You know what I'm saying? Nigerians are wired. Whenever money is coming out from the government, they see it as part of their own kick share. But the point is that would, that would have been, if, if it's well monitored, that would have been a very good thing. So In so some states, they are doing it. Right. You know, some states, are in Niger State, yeah. they give people, um, farmers um, um, not cash. Even if you think that it's going to be an element of cash, very little, but the point is that would give them a seed. Um, 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 mach um, machines and so many things, you know, in terms of uh, not direct uh, cash. But at the same time, you find out that what you know they did that during COVID too. Um, you find out that some of those coins were being sold in the market too. You will see on the back not for sale, but it's already being sold. Uh, at the market price. So, so what would you suggest? Because you've, you, you just said, you know, put a caveat, if well managed, and mm. uh, the cash transfer scheme, we've seen the, um, how it is porous. Anchor borrowers. Yes, the anchor borrowers. We've seen, you know, past interventions, you know, by the government, mm. past government. Mm. Uh, but yet, here are we. We are still, you know, in the position. We are even in a worse, worse off position. Well, how would you, you know, suggest that if this, because something has to be done, really. The government oh, is uh, be, being faced with so many options now. What, what for you would be, you know, a quick fix? Um, apart from being given, uh, being sub, uh, a government can have a kind of um, 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 labor bureau in such a way that um, um, you be engaged. Um, you have a kind of card mm. which identifies you, just like NIA, what yeah. NIA will do for you. Um, once you have, farmers can engage people from that pool, mm. and when they engage them, um, in turn, whatever, what they do within a month, they can give them maybe about... 40% of it can be in terms of, uh, can be paid back, I and mean, it can be given to them in terms of food. The remaining in terms of what? Credit their account, cash. Um, government can do that one. In such a way that um, um, not only that um, uh, you just go to the farm, but you are being taken care of. I, I, do you understand what I'm saying? So what I'm saying is that what, they don't share that what, engage you, the farmers will come around to engage you. Because they have, you have a number which will make them to, at the end of the day, to pay you back, to pay you for the, what you have done. You understand what I'm saying? But at the same time, you have a situation whereby the labor, you reduce the labor cost and you also ensure that what people are being what? Engaged. Then another thing is that what the government can also do which is in the area of those um, supporting solidarity farm or whatever, monitoring has to be done. Then they have to also engage trusted people in the community, farmers in the community. I mean, um, the chiefs, the local chiefs in the community, they know the farmers. They know the genuine ones. You know what I'm saying? You can't buy them. You know, you have to engage those ones too. Because... Um, the way we are going, um, we have a security issue, no doubt about that. If we can solve security issue, if we can have rule of law in place, at least to a certain extent, you find out that what farmer can go to the field, farmer can walk, and you can also subsidize whatever they are doing. 
The negating that what another thing you can also help them to do is that what provide market for them, easy market, road network, put them in place in such a way that what whatever they produce in the farm can easily be moved to what to the market location. I think with those little, little things put in place, you know, for farmer need is basically little little things. Like for example, now this morning they were talking about irrigation farming. You know what, what the, the that farmer is only looking at look water. water. Mm. So farmers will not tell you to come and look for buy a shrimp for me. Mm. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> All what they need is what access, so ability to use whatever they need. Mm. And once they continue to do that, you know what I'm saying? You find out that what the food will continue to be in the market. Mm. And then, not only, don't just leave them when they have harvest time. You know what I'm saying? Just ensure that what they have goods have moved into the market and have been they can they can have money. Mm. at least excess money in terms of profit over their labor. So to encourage them. But there's something the government is doing, talking about the release of grains, uh, saying that that could you know, crash the prices of food items. If you look at the papers this morning, that story is splashed all over, where the government is saying about 102,000 metric tons of grains, mm. look about, I think, rice, gary, and some other things, be released out of... Uh, uh, strategic storage uh, points for to crash the price. Do you see that working as well? Um, maybe for a few days. few days? Yes, few days. Um, you see, the issue is, we have to look at it, but apart from the general price increase, we also look at it, our purchasing power of people. The people have that kind of money, that money. To buy the goods itself. Even when the prices crash. The prices crash, crash. How many people are working? How many people are working? How many people have, have enough money to buy that same goods? Um, for the past one, six months or more, we've been talking about an uh, increase in salary. Mm -hmm. Has it been done? No. And prices have skyrocketed. Cracks. So the point is that what do they have enough to buy? So when you look at this thing, you well, look at the numbers. Well, the essence is to make it affordable for them to be able to buy. Mm. Where it one might say, okay, the money you are spending is not just for food items alone. Mm. So, but then food is critical. So I think it should still solve some problem for Nigeria. You know, I said it that uh, maybe for a few days. Because um, the point is, do you have enough to buy? But, but we tried it during COVID. You know, there, there were the food farms that government also introduced at the time. People were hungry. We had a, a bit of a crisis at the time. And to avert it, Lagos and other states also had that, you know, fresh from farm produce, take it to strategic locations within local government, mm -hmm. sell them at cheaper prices, affordable prices for, for people of course, um, of co there are lessons to be learned, really, because, you know, how accessible was it? But if well monitored, don't you think this can also, you know, extend beyond the few days that you, you, you fear? You said it now, if well monitored. Mm -hmm. But you still find out that what those that are supposed to monitor the movement of the goods are the ones that will be selling, are the ones that will be hoarding. At the end of the day, you have some of those quality, some of those goods mm. in storehouse. Mm. And the government, also, was, the government has also spoken about that, you know, warning that hoarders will not find it funny this time around because, yes, people may want to take advantage mm. of the situation. We lead by example. When we get there, because you have, um, you see, there is this thing in us that we must keep for our people, we must hold for our people. Then you start seeing somebody that wants to do birthday party and all that kind of thing, government officials. Mm -hmm. So I think that's where the problem is. If it can really, um, uh, well, if, if it can be monitored, number one, and it can be, and it can be accessible by the people that need it, mm -hmm. that need it, you know what I mean? That would be, that would be, that would be okay. But the point is that what, if, it, if that element is not there, you find out that what, um, uh, it will be story all over again. Now, the, we know that Nigeria used to be that country that had pyramids 
food, uh, yeah. when you talk about the 70s mm -hmm. and uh, part of the 80s, food was not a problem. Food was yeah. not a challenge. Mm -hmm. There are those who talk about perhaps uh, increasing population and mm -hmm. the demand. We also see that um, persons from outside the country are also coming into Nigeria mm -hmm. to buy some of our grains. But uh, it just went down mm -hmm. all of a sudden. I'm wondering what happened in between before we got to this point. Um, you see, um, we didn't match our exposure with what we started with as a country. Um, we are getting exposed. Um, people start, um, you know, in those days you used to think that what um, farmers uh, suppose are poor. They are not supposed but they are poor. And uh, you don't want to... Um, uh, uh, continue to be poor, and uh, probably you send your children to the whatever to, 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 school. The city, to mm. school to the cities. Even if you send them to school, they can still come back to be a farmer. But one thing is so sure is that what uh, you know, uh, people like um, uh, Obasanjo, Shagari, they were thinking, they thought ahead mm. about operation feed the nation, right. all those things they were you know bringing it back. Because they realize that what people are really migrating, mm. you know, going to white collar jobs and all that kind of thing. Um, not realize that what those things are meant to fill uh, uh, the vacancies and all that kind of thing. But another thing that what which is what is very important is that what is that um, you know um, we did not think ahead enough mm. to get prepared for this day for this time, for this season. You see, one of those things we'll have done is that what is that term? Um, you see, we have machinery. People don't really rely on having, uh, uh, using all the necessary energy to cultivate. You know, we have machines that can do that. We have technology that can do that. You know, uh, just like the issue of security that we have today, you know what I'm saying? In a, in a civilized world, with the amount of technology that we have, we shouldn't be talking about bandits. We shouldn't be talking about terrorists. You understand what I'm saying? That we use food to demand money from you, and yet you can't monitor them. You understand? So I think uh, what will happen is that we did not prepare ahead and realize that what? We are increasing in population, you know, seriously. And as we are increasing in population, what is our plan to feed the people that are coming? And that's what we didn't do well in it. You know what I'm so um, it's very important to really um, see that, not only look at palliative or, you know, way forward. We are in it already. The key thing is for us to now sit down and look at, look, how do we ensure that what? People that are turning them to kidnappers and all that kind of thing, how do we engage them? You know what I'm saying? Because it's, when you see sure money and um, you're asking somebody to go and farm, Wait for another six months to be able to realize, be not, you know what I'm saying, you know. So, how do we get here? How do we get ourselves out of this way? It's, um, it's, it's very important. It's critical. And there's also the issue of um, climate change. Climate change, you know what I'm saying? Right. No, yes, climate change, you know, I'm telling you, know, right now, if we are positioning ourselves, we should be feeding, Africa should be feeding the world. In fact, Nigeria should be feeding the world. You know, we should be a country that the other part of the world should rely on. Because we have the soil, and uh, we can manage our water too. Uh, we might not really be producing so much, but we can produce so much too. We might not produce so much, we can produce so much. So much in the sense that what? In the sense that everything that is necessary is put in place. You know, is put in place. So... What are we talking about? The soil, our soil is good. It was one, it's one of the best in the world, you know, that we can continue to produce and produce. So it's about, we didn't prepare. We thought those things that we were enjoying in the time past. In the time past, during the, even before the prayer, before the, just before this uh, uh, cash wash in, uh, in Nigeria, that we were talking about, you don't know what to do with money. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But we didn't plan to say that we're looking, and then everybody go into various production, shy bath, marry wives, mm -hmm. and all that kind of thing. And then you, you have, so if you had prepared, if you are really get ready, you know what I'm saying, 
wouldn't have been this kind of uh, mess. You understand? Right. But we're seeing uh, some states looking at uh, collaborating to address this, yes. this matter of food security. We see Lagos, Kwara, and Niger states looking to partner. Yes. At some point, we had Lagos and Kebi State for lake rice, yes. uh, but we don't know what happened to, to that, that, uh, that agreement. Uh, but these kinds of handshakes from states' collaboration, how far-reaching can it go to addressing these matters? Uh, it's good, um, in the sense that what, um, um, it will, because this um, eating center, I mean, I'm talking about Lagos State, mm -hmm. where you have... Um, and not only it's a market center, right. you know, Lagos State. It's a hub. Uh, it's a hub. Um, not only that, um, you, that partner, not only that partnership alone, I think in those states, um, um, security should be strengthened too, in such a way that was, so that um, the partnership will not what, will not fear. Mm -hmm. You know, um, we, uh, they did tell us what happened to KB, like you said. Uh, if they have told us, you know, probably maybe they will have a reason. They will Perhaps have, they have learned lessons uh, from learned. that and decided. But one of those things that Lagos State need to do too, mm. you know what I'm saying? I said that I used to say, it. Um, let me pick one product, a vegetable like fugu, you know, um, over sixty percent of what we eat in Lagos is from Lagos State itself, mm. you know. But well, Lagos State has to work on the, on the road networks within Lagos State that serve the farmlands. Mm. Very important. They have to work on that one. They have to work on not only having red and blue line, but they need to work on those roads so that accessibility, you know, to the to the marketplace. Absolutely. And they also have to work on the villages, um, people that are stopping a, a truck, you know. You can, between, between, let's just pick a place, between Agbo and Ikorodu, you can have about five or six of them, you know. And um, extortion from the policemen, too. They need to also work on that, too. Right. You know what I'm saying? Uh, the issue of infrastructure also is also one, um, one key area, uh, yes. begging for attention. But quickly now, on the option before government, another option before government is food importation, you know, at, at this time to also help to, you know, meet the shortfall. Do you subscribe to that as well? Um, in as much that is going to take us out of this mess, but at the same time, uh, while we are trying to solve this problem, the present solution, while we are the present problem, let us also think ahead so that we can continue to import food. After all, those countries are we are, are, we, are we self-sufficient? We, we, it doesn't seem like we're self-sufficient. We still need some of this. But there is so much higher unemployment in the country. And the lands are there. Insecurity, yes, issue. How many people can go to their farms? How yeah, many people can go to their farms? So I, I think that in their waste, wastages, they are right. too much. That's another issue. Get to, uh, you're behind you here. Get to uh, to markets. Mm. You see heaps of oranges, mm. uh, purple, and other kind of stuff. Plantain, rotten plantains. You see them there. So, is it so difficult to you know address this matter of wastage? Because I recall that every time we speak about um, food security, we mention this matter of uh, wastage, addressing wastage. Why is it difficult for us to really do something? Um, it's about willingness, you know, ready to work on it. Like, for example, we are talking about partnership with Lake Hara and Lego and uh, uh, Niger. Uh, and Niger. Uh, if, if Lagos states or neighboring states or the states where those things are coming from, they are willing and ready. Like, just like tomatoes too. They Do we have the facilities for storage? 
it can be told to so many things, mm. not only storage alone. Even while transporting we them transport, now, yes, they have, yes. if the trucks yes. are you know, built yes. in a way yes. that these are perishable yes. Yes. if we can preserve why do you have to? Why do you have to bring uh, so much? Uh, we can bring so much to Lagos State, but why do you have to really uh, bring so much and uh, 40 and to 50 wasted. people wasted? Mm. You know what I'm saying? Why not make use of, uh, if you have... Um, uh, a kind of uh, um, industry along the road. It doesn't have to, be it doesn't have to, have to come here, everything raw. You understand what I'm saying? You know. So we can do that. You know. uh, planting, turning to uh, uh, ah. power flour, and all that kind of thing. So uh, everything don't have to come to Lagos as it was being there as raw. Yeah. So we can really take care of that. So by the time you bring everything to Lagos, you find out that what? You just go to, you go to, you go to there. You see, you just ask yourself, all the way, whoever, maybe from Oshu, maybe from Ikiti, maybe from Ekwara, and you have them, you know. Because roads are, you, some, sometimes you find out that from Lilori to this place, with those trucks, mm -hmm. might take you two or three days. Yeah. Not because, of, not because, it sh not because you can't get there in one day. Well, the bike, I mean, the truck situation, you know, in terms of... Uh, their condition. Their condition, yes. So, those are the things, you know. Um, a few days ago, uh, from uh, a lorry, a truck coming from Plateau State uh, had an accident. Mm. About 50, how many cows? I don't know, 30 or 50 cows died. You know that? So, you, you can really have so many things along... And no who way, pays yeah. for the loss? <laughs> so, so Still because, the consumers. The consumers. <laughs> so it, it's just a complex situation, yeah. and we can only wish the government the best and hope yes. that uh, in the coming days uh, there is some respite for Nigerians as it is. We must thank you, Uluremi Kupola, uh, CEO Tungo Farm Enterprises, for your time on the program. Thank, thank you. Very much. Good morning.